everyone, welcome back to our channel and welcome to Munich. I'm once again in a very dark and secret room because there is a new product to film about a month before the official debut, which is in October. So by the time you're watching this video, the car might be out. We have here the second generation BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe and to learn all about it, I have here with me Christopher Weil, the head of exterior design at BMW. Before I'm gonna ask you some questions, Christopher, we have two cars here, M235, no I anymore, and we have a BNL individual in Borussan Blue, yes. which is part of the individual program. Individual program, right. But I guess this is the positioning color, the positioning car for the new 2 Series Grand Coupe. It's also an M235 in Brooklyn Gray. It's becoming a staple in the BNW color palette. So how about we start with this one and talk about the design and tell me a little bit about the idea behind the design of the new 2 Series Grand Coupe. The main focus was to make the car more sporty. So we tried to bring the, the front lower to the ground that it's looking more, more sitting on the street. Okay. Therefore, we lowered the kidneys a lot. We gave the kidneys more width than on the predecessor. And the arrangement of the, of the headlights compared to the kidney is like on a sports car. So higher sitting front lights, lower kidney, lower wide kidney. So let me ask you this. I mean, at a first glance, honestly, it looks like a one series from the front, right? So clearly part of the same family, front wheel drive. Yeah. Any other similarities or differences that we might not see at a first glance? This was also the aim to kind of give the two cars the, the same face. Mm -hmm. So it's the same length, the same overhang, the same kidney, same configuration. Okay, so now if you look at the previous generation 2 Series Grand Coupe, which was maybe not everyone's favorite. What are some of the changes that you feel like it's going to make a huge impact on the car and how it's being perceived by customers? Yeah, the car before was a bit clumsy here and on the front end. And now it's, as I said, more taut, more sporty, more uh, centered to the ground. Also, the, the lower air intake, for example, is wider now. You have this centerpiece, which is pointing at the, at the kidney split. It's kind of really strong picture. It's, yeah, more sports car-like. Okay, if you look from the side, are there any differences in the silhouette compared to the first generation? I mean, we can take a look actually. Um, let's start with the wheels. The wheels are one inch bigger than the predecessor. The roof is a bit more sloping in this area here. We have a different Hofmeister, so it's now angled the other way. And the transition towards the rear is more coupe-like, it's more fluent than before. So was this one of the main ideas with this car to improve kind of the silhouette of the previous one and by giving it more of a coupe look than before? Yes, so we wanted to also enhance here the sportiness by giving it a more coupe look, more coupe look and to, let's say, to extend the Hofmeister to drag it a bit longer that the car is looking more fluent in side profile. So you and I talked about this monolithic design. We still haven't figured out what it really means in my language, but we can talk about that in one second. Uh, simplify shapes once again, just like some of the newer BMWs like the X3 M5 that just drove today, kind of the same idea on the side as well? Yeah, so we had the idea to kind of uh, stretch the car a little bit more than the predecessor. Of course, it should have big surfacing like you can see in the front. So we have kind of full powerful surfacing here in this area. Down here, we extended the rocker area towards the front. So the car looks now more stretched, more elegant than before. Okay, any other changes on the side that you think they're worth pointing out? I mean, clearly I see the M mirrors, which are now reserved for M performance products as well. I guess we'll see in the back something else in a second too. Yeah, this is the M ingredients. Uh, what I can point out here is, uh, for example, that we sharpened the lines, the line work towards the rear and also the whole rear end is, is a different configuration now. More sporty, more stretched. We have tail lamps, which are slimmer than on the predecessor and it shows a new graphic from the rear end. Okay, so, all right, let's talk about the rear end, right? So, I mean, clearly that's, was, that's one topic that's probably gonna draw some discussions around it because you're getting this duality taillights in the back, similar to the X2. I guess the X2 started is all this, you know, family of new taillights we've seen on, on the one series, identical to the one series and X2 or a little bit different? They're a little bit different. So the graphics is a little bit different on all three cars, but we see here this um, middle piece or this like tool, if out. you, this little cutout, um, which is splitting up the taillight into two pieces. And this configuration we see on all the more sporty, smaller BMWs. This is kind of making them more fresh, more naughty in a certain way, because you're not used from BMW to see such a detail. So there's more cars now, um, like this, the small BMWs, the sporty ones, which are showing exactly this tail lamp configuration. Okay, now my favorite topic, you're getting quad pipes on this car as well. Yes. What's the idea there? 
MPA always has quad pikes, strong, strongest motorization is showing um, yeah, the, the exhausts. Here you have the four exhaust configuration as on the other MPAs. Mm -hmm. Big exhaust pipes, we want to stage them. But these cars, like the MPAs, are the only BMWs, as you know, which are showing exhaust pipes anyhow. So basically pipeless and all the other configurations. Yes. I'm assuming the diffuser changes also on the non-MPA model as well, right? A little yeah. bit different? It's a little bit different. It's close then. Um, we have here the typical sport pack configuration with the upright reflectors here. We have a very sporty appearance and the whole rear end is also here calmer, cleaner. This surface here has a lot of power staging the BMW logo and um, I think the tail lamps are giving width to the car and yeah, making it, as I said before, a bit more sporty. All right, so let's talk about the taillights. I've seen it first on the BMW X2. I can't really say they were very well received, but let's give it a shot and try to explain the design idea behind mm -hmm. this, because I know you're playing with this duality aspect at the front also, and especially now in the back, you know, dual lights inside those taillights and of course the dual exhaust pipe. So maybe walk me through the design idea of these taillights. Exactly, this was the idea, the initial idea behind it, to take the double round iconic front lights, the theme, and transfer it to the back. And uh, this is an icon for our small, very sporty um, BMW cars, like the X2, as you mentioned, the one series, the two series. So this is the connector, let's say. Okay, so now when you go into a design brief like this, do you always try to separate the car families? So you have like the upper class, which kind of follows the same design language between them, and then you have the entry class. They all gonna try to stick together to have kind of like a unified look. That's kind of the idea usually. Yeah, we want to um, treat our performance cars um, like uh, with one design treatment, with one theme, let's mm -hmm. say. And we transferred it, um, in this case, to the rear. And as I said before, it's for our small, more, let's say, naughty cars, it's adding freshness. So before we look inside, I know you're not directly responsible for interior design. You can probably talk about it a little bit. Let me ask you this. Who do you think it's the customer for the two series Grand Coupe? Like, how would you describe that? Because I'm assuming that was part of the design brief as well. You have a yes. persona and you need yes. to, you know, build a car for that person. Of course, it's a sporty person, a young person who wants to drive um, with a lot of ambition or who likes driving, who likes the driving dynamics of a BMW, but uh, who also needs a bit more, let's say, um, versatility. Like you have the extra doors in the back. Um, it's a very elegant and, and sporty silhouette. So if you have a small family, for example, it would, would be the perfect car for you. Okay, so maybe we transition inside right now and take a look at that design. All right, so first glance inside, I guess it looks like a one series, right? Is there anything different before we even dive into all the details? Yeah, there's not too much different. It's exactly the interior of the one series, but it's cleaner as the predecessor. It's a lot more reduced. Um, we have the curved center display now, all more, let's say, sporty, driver focused. And it's a little bit different in the MPA model, right? So if I recall for the one series, you're getting this stitching, you know, which is specific to the M235. Which exactly. Is, before it was the M135. Also the color uh, scheme here. The color uh, scheme is coming in with colors. The, exactly. But other than that, really one-to-one -one copy. I'm assuming iDrive 9, probably there. I'm going to dive into those details with the product yeah. manager as well. We can talk about that. Yeah. No more iDrive controller? I guess. No more iDrive controller. So it's more um, touch focused here. And uh, yeah, I think you know already how to yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is becoming a staple right now in the yeah. X1 and X2 and all of this. You get a little bit of a driving orientation, I guess, right? So still... Driver orientation, yeah, nice material mix here. Um, as I said before, cleaner, more reduced. You have um, like the driver focus, but besides that kind of these, these diagonal axes here in the interior, uh, integration of ambient light and uh, the climate control functions. Yeah, it's very reduced, very nice very sporty, very much wrapping around the driver. Brand new seats as well. I can see that they're M Sport seats. Yeah. I guess you can see this. Uh, I guess they're not leather. You can get a, a you know, vegan interior as well. It's like in the one True. series probably. There's different trims, yeah. Okay, so honestly, that's kind of the story inside. There isn't much to talk about. I guess if you look at the one series, you'll probably see the same one-to-one -one copy. Thanks for the overview on the car. I guess next step for us will be to find out more about the engines. So we're going to talk about that in the next bit. And then hopefully next year I get to drive the car and see what it can do on the road. So 
as always, Christopher, thanks for all the details. All right, so now to learn more about the car, I'm here with me, Han Chao, the product manager for the one series and the two series. And as always, we want to go into all the details. So maybe let's start with the engine. We're going to split US versus Europe, and we can talk about the differences there too. All right, so the engine uh, portfolio spans from two, one, one, two, 16, which is a three cylinder 90 kilowatt engine, okay. up to the top range engine, as we can see here, depending on the markets, 233 kilowatt output for the so called 235 X drive. Okay, so in the US, that translates to about 313 horsepower. Correct. And essentially, what we're seeing here is the difference between the European spec, which has a little less power versus the US spec. Now, if you stay on the US market, is there something specific for the market in relation to this car? Yes, there is. Uh, we see a very high demand from our US customers in terms of design and sportiness driving. Okay. So all US configurations come standard with the M Sport in the exterior, including 18-inch M Sport wheel. And all US configurations come as standard with the so-called M Sport suspension system uh, for a very sporty driving style. Do you offer the same M Technic package that's available in the One Series? Very good question, yes. For the top line version, for the 235 X Drive, we're offering the so-called M Technology package, which adds additional sportiness, driving behavior into the car. And these are things like strength and body, different camber settings, different uh, suspension mm -hmm. settings, and different wheels and different brakes to have a very close performance that you need for maybe a, tra a track day. Okay, so let's move to the side and maybe let's talk about the wheels as well. So you mentioned 18 inch wheels, any other options available? Yes, so the US configuration has 18 inch in standard and this is 19 inch as maximum wheel size and uh, we have multiple wheels and this is the light uh, alloy forged version. Okay. Wheel. When it comes to the M Sport brakes, you're also getting different caliper colors yes. like on the One Series? Yes, okay. so this is the top line M Sport uh, brake. This is the 19 inch performance brake with mm -hmm. uh, compound brake pads. And this comes in 19 inch in gray, but we also have the 18 inch M Sport brakes, which comes in both blue and red uh, caliper colors. Okay, now since we're looking at the side view of the car, I've talked to Christopher about the design and the proportions, but let's talk about, you know, space maybe a little bit or size. Mm -hmm. Has it changed in size compared to the first generation 2 Series Grand Coupe? Uh, so the size is, uh, it's very similar to the first generation of 2 Series Grand Coupe. Very spacious in the front, but also in the back. The main difference in the interior is that we have a completely new dashboard and completely new seats. So it gets, uh, gets you a completely different interior uh, appearance. So if we stay a little bit on the dimensions and size, because Christopher mentioned there is a bit more of a you know, slopping roof line, coupage roof line. Are you losing any headroom in the back seat? No, we have no compromise in the headroom. Okay. And we have a very similar trunk size at uh, 422 liters. So you get the same trunk size as before, yes, as the fourth correct. generation. Yes. Okay. So let's assume that I'm a two series Grand Coupe customer currently, and you're looking to get me into this car. Mm -hmm. What are some of the deltas between the two products? So this car is focused on a much younger customer and the customer that's focused on versatility, but also on lifestyle. So this car is focusing on someone who wants to express that his car has certain uniqueness because this has a small volume, it's a niche model and uh, a very expressive design. And this is the customers we're targeting with this particular model. Okay, now if we look inside, we only have the M235 here. I'm assuming there is a difference also in the interior design from a base 2 Series Grand Coupe and the high-end MPA. Because mm -hmm. we've seen the same thing in the 1 Series, even the dashboard and the colors and materials were a little bit different. Yes, so the base version has already a very high standard of specification with curved display and navigation and so on. But of course, we have uh, upgradable features like real aluminum interior trims, which are illuminated. Mm -hmm. In this configurations, we have very nice M spot color stitchings and uh, leather steering wheels. And of course, my personal highlight are the new M spot seats, uh, which are, have integrated headrests, mm -hmm. a really nice sporty geometry and illuminated M logos. What kind of trim options and upholstery options do you offer in the car? So, in the worldwide offer, we're starting with the base seat with cloth upholstery, okay. which can upgrade it to sports seats and our new um, sustainable upholstery called Econia, which is made out of uh, PET plastic recycled. And then 
this is our, these are the base uh, configurations. And then for customers who want to upgrade to M Sport, we have an M Sport seat with an, a leather red and Alcantara mixture. And this seat can again upgrade it to the M Sport seat, which are the seats you can see here with the integrated headrest and much more sportier geometry. Okay, so before we talk about pricing, market availability and all of that, individual color, I've already talked about this a little bit with Christopher, but how many colors do you offer as part of the individual program? Is there a limit or it's unlimited? It has a limit, okay. but it's a wide, wide range of uh, colors. We have in total, I believe, 160 individual colors yeah. on top of the 10 standard colors you can get. With the and what are some of the base colors for DM235? Because if you cover all of them, it's probably too much. That's uh, Brooklyn Gray, so we're already seeing that. Yes, so the base colors, this is a position color we call Brooklyn Gray. A very popular other gray color is the skyscraper gray color. Okay. But other popular colors are frozen, frozen colors, for example, frozen Portimao and frozen gray. Mm. But also we have very popular white colors like uh, Alpine White, as you know from a lot of other BMW models. So pretty similar to the one series lineup once again. Yes, pretty similar. But uh, one additional color uh, we're introducing new with this car is the uh, fire red color, which is a very poppy red uh, expressive color. And I think that's called Vegas red in the US because someone in the legal department didn't like the word fire, but that's a different story. So let's talk about pricing and market availability. So let's play it once again by Europe or maybe Germany versus the US, keep it simple that way. So M235 pricing in Germany. Germany is around uh, 59,000 euros. Okay. And for the US is around 49,000 US dollars and above. Gotcha. And the entry level model in Europe will be which motorization? The entry model will be the 216. Okay. starting at around $36,000 and the entry model for the US market will be the 228 starting around 39,000 US dollars. Okay, so now before we really finish with the market availability, is there a difference also when it comes to the mild hybrid offering in certain models versus the M235? Because if I recall, this one does not have the mild hybrid, but some other models do, right? Yes, correct. So we have this one as a 12 volt performance engine, mm -hmm. the M35 xDrive. And in uh, certain markets, for example, Europe, we have the 220 and 223 X-Drive in mild hybrid, but also a 220 diesel variant as mild hybrid. Okay, so final question, market availability. So we will have a worldwide market launch for this car on 1st of March. And uh, for some markets, it could be a week later, but this is around the time we're launching this car worldwide. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks for the information. Guys, thanks for watching this video. It's all about the second generation 2 Series Grand Coupe. Of course, the next step is for us to drive the car and see how it handles compared also to the 1 Series, which I'm going to drive actually tomorrow, I guess. And then uh, also compared to the previous generation. So for that, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.